Most people are much smarter than they think they are. And I say this from experience. After years of teaching hundreds of students, I have seen the potential that lies inside people. I have seen how smart people actually are. And the thing is, most people don't realize it. Most people don't realize their full potential. And even when they do realize it, they don't know how to unlock it. They don't know how to untap that genius mind that's hidden inside of them. In this video, I'm going to give you strategies and tips that you can implement right away to start unlocking your true potential. These are things that after watching this video, you can start doing them and you can start getting better right away. I am The Math Sorcerer and this is my YouTube channel. If you are not a subscriber, consider subscribing today. Believe in yourself. This is absolutely the most important thing you can do in order to succeed. I cannot emphasize this enough. I will share a really quick story. I once had a student who was taking an algebra class and this student struggled more than any other student I have ever seen in my life. The student would study for six hours a day every day and they just kept struggling. At the end of the semester, they ended up with a wonderful grade and they persevered, they succeeded. It's because they believed in themselves, that power of belief kept them pushing. They never gave up. Embrace failure. This is super important. You want to use your failures as learning experiences so that you can do better next time. For example, let's say you're in college or high school and you take an exam and you don't do so well. Use that as an opportunity to improve. What can you do next time? Maybe you need to study more. Maybe you studied the wrong topics. Maybe you didn't get enough sleep. Maybe you got nervous. Whatever it is, you need to embrace that failure address the issues so that you can not repeat the same mistakes. Use different learning methods. This is extremely important and extremely helpful because maybe the learning method you're using is not working for you. If you are sitting there with a math book and you're trying to read it and you just don't get it, as much as I love math books, maybe it's not the best route for you. Maybe you need another method on top of that to help complement your reading. For example, you could take a course, you could watch videos, you can take an actual college level class. There's different ways to learn and I think that when you experiment with the different ways, you're going to find what works best for you. And if you don't find what works best for you, at least you're going to experience learning from different perspectives, right? Through video, through reading, through a live in-class lecture, whatever it takes. Flashcards are a great tool for learning. When I first started learning mathematics, I would use flashcards all the time. I would actually write down entire little mathematical problems on each flashcard and then I would shuffle them and then I would deal them to myself and I would do them. I would speed do the problems. I would do them as fast as I could. Really, really insane type of studying, but it helps. You can also use flashcards for formulas. You know, if there's a formula you don't know, you can put the name of the formula on one side of the flashcard and the actual formula on the other side. And then you can look at the formula and then write it down. Then you can check your answer by flipping over the card. So all kinds of ways that you can use flashcards. Try to figure out how you can use them to learn whatever it is you're trying to learn because it's going to help you. Study multiple subjects. I think this is one that is very hard for people who are trying to specialize in a specific field or trying to learn something specific. It really helps when you broaden your learning and learn other things. For example, let's say you're trying to become a computer programmer. It doesn't hurt to learn some mathematics or maybe some biology or some other subject that is completely unrelated. Any type of learning you can do on top of the learning that you're trying to do is going to help you. It's going to broaden your perspective. You're going to learn new things and it's just going to make you a better, well-rounded human being. The more you know, the better the perspectives you have, and the more you can appreciate others, and the more you can see the world in a better way. Sleep, it really, really helps. I have known people that did not sleep very well, and they did very good. And I think that if they would have slept more, they would have done so much better. I'm sure you've had that experience where it's late at night and you're trying to learn something and you just don't get it, you're exhausted, you can't focus, you just wanna do something else. You wanna watch TV, you wanna play video games, or maybe you just wanna go to sleep. The last thing you wanna do is study. In cases like that, I oftentimes think it's a good idea to just do something else, get some sleep, wake up the next day early in the morning and get to work. In the morning, your mind is fresh. It is sharp as a tack 
and you are ready to go. Now, when you wake up in the morning, you might be tired and groggy. I certainly wake up that way. But after you wake up and get going, maybe some coffee, things change. You can become a learning monster. I 100% believe that learning in the morning is the best. And that's because it's the best for me when I wake up. I feel sharp. I feel ready. And I'm ready to go. So if you haven't tried studying first thing in the morning, try it. What I used to do is I would get up in the morning before going to school and go over my notes. I would actually go over my notes during breakfast before going to class. And on test days, I would get up at four in the morning and I would go over all of my notes and all of my homework problems, just glance them over just to get an idea of, you know, here's all the knowledge that I've learned. Am I ready for this exam? So getting into the habit of sleeping and getting up early and studying, I think that's one of the best things you can do for learning, especially if you're in college or in high school. It is going to completely change your success. You are going to do so much better, even by just changing this one thing. It's going to help you. Practice mindfulness. This is the art of being aware of your actual thoughts. So when you're feeling stressed, you can say, hey, I am feeling stressed. Why am I having these thoughts? When you don't feel like studying, you can say, hey, I don't feel like studying. Why am I having these thoughts? Why don't I want to study? And a lot of times you're going to find that maybe it's not the best time to study. Maybe you need to go outside. Maybe you need to eat some food. Maybe you need to sleep or maybe you need to work on something else. The art of being mindful is so useful. Being aware of your thoughts is critical and it really is life changing. It takes practice. It takes a lot of practice to get good at it, but try it. It can make a difference. If you really want to unlock your hidden potential, if you want to become really, really good at something, then you really need to prioritize learning. What I mean by that is you need to make it a daily habit and it needs to be a priority in your life. Even for just 30 minutes a day, you should do it every day. Make it part of your daily routine. It's going to change how you think, and you will be surprised at how much you learn in such a short period of time. You'd be shocked at how much mathematics you can learn in just two weeks if you do math every single day. The truth is, most people don't prioritize learning. And the reason is, it's hard, right? It's hard to study every day. And it's very likely you'll burn out if you study too much. So my advice is prioritize your learning and start small. Start with half an hour a day and then work yourself up. Take breaks so that you don't burn out. And remember, make it part of your routine. If you do it every day, you're going to become so much better. Stay organized. By stay organized, I mean that you want to have everything ready for your learning sessions. You want to know what you're going to study tomorrow, how much time you're going to spend on it, what book you're going to use or what video you're going to watch or what part of a course you're going to finish. Whatever it is you're doing, you want to know what it is. For example, if today is Wednesday and tomorrow is Thursday, what are you learning tomorrow? Have that written down on a piece of paper or somewhere so that when you wake up the next day, you can just look at it and say, hey, I'm going to do this. This is what I'm going to do today. It's going to take me 30 minutes or an hour and I'm going to get it done. And that's how it becomes part of your daily habit. I often find that if people don't write down what they're going to do the next day, when they wake up the next day, their mind is all over the place. Oh, I should do this, or maybe I want to do this. No, no, no. Remember, you have to prioritize your learning, and that involves you know, writing down those goals, those daily goals, and actually executing them. So if you're thinking about starting a study plan, write down what you want to do tomorrow. Go ahead, take a piece of paper and a pencil right now, right now, and write down what it is you want to learn tomorrow for half an hour to an hour. And then tomorrow when you get up in the morning, you just do it and it will make a difference. I guarantee it. Exercise patience. Patience is really important and it's very easy to become impatient, especially if you're not seeing results right away. Let's say you're taking a basic algebra class and you start studying for 30 minutes a day and you do that for three days and then you have a quiz and you don't do so well. Well, hey, it's only been three days, right? It's a struggle. I have seen people struggle. I have seen people work harder than you can possibly imagine. I have seen people do mathematics for eight hours a day, Monday through Friday, you know, for a full semester, you know, with breaks for lunch and to eat and to go to the bathroom, but every day, consistent mathematics. People have the ability to work hard. Remember that you have the ability to work hard. Tap into it. You're so much better than you think you are. You really are. Patience matters. 
when you're aware that learning takes time, it really takes the stress off. You know, if you're just going to study 30 minutes to an hour a day, just trust the process. Know that after about five or six days, you're going to be really a lot better than you were when you started. Stress is bad and you want to learn to manage it. I think the art of being mindful, which I mentioned earlier, has a big impact on this. Whenever you're feeling stressed, if you're aware of your thoughts, if you tell yourself, hey, I'm feeling stressed because I got a bad grade or I'm feeling stressed because I don't understand what's going on in this biology class. Those thoughts are in your mind because you're letting them be. You know, Tell yourself, hey, I don't need to have these thoughts. I can do it. I can believe in myself and I can learn and I can untap that hidden potential that I have inside my mind. Learn with others. When you learn with others, it is amazing because you can see how they learn. You can learn from them. I used to have this friend in graduate school. He would always go really, really slowly when he wrote his mathematical proofs. He was a very chill dude. And so he had like a slow thinking pattern. He was able to think carefully and just piece together proofs in a really beautiful way. By watching him work, by seeing how smart he was, by seeing how his thought processes worked, I was able to emulate that and try to learn from him. I myself am a very fast person. I do mathematics fast. I think fast. I talk fast. So by working with someone who was you know, 10 degrees lower, much, much chiller, much slower, a much careful thinker, I was able to adapt his principle. And whenever I got stuck on a problem, I would tell myself to step back, think carefully, calm down, what do I know? What am I trying to prove? And that's just one example. I could give countless examples of how when working with others has benefited me in my life. You can learn from people because remember, people are smarter than you think. People are so smart and they don't even realize it. What you eat does make a difference. You want to try to maintain a relatively healthy diet. Now, I myself have gone through periods in life where I eat a bunch of fast food and then I go through periods where I eat really healthy and I have noticed a difference. If you eat well, generally you're going to do better. Exercising is another one that really helps learning. Sometimes you study so much and you have like this brain fog and you can't focus. Go outside and get some exercise. Go to a gym, jump in a pool, whatever it is you like to do, do it. Get some fresh air, be outside, and get exercise. It makes a difference on your mental state, and it will help clear that brain fog that sometimes we have when we're just not feeling it, when you're just not feeling like studying. It's really going to help pep you up and make you feel better and make you want to learn, and you'll be able to unlock that hidden genius that lives inside of all of us. Find a mentor. This can be life-changing, especially if you find a good one. If you find a person who already knows what you're trying to learn and that person is willing to help you and guide you and give you motivation and inspiration, then you should accept that help. Finding a mentor is quite challenging. The best you can do is if you're in college, look for friends, look for professors. It's pretty tough. You can also watch videos on the internet and those can help inspire you. But I really think that Finding a mentor in real life is really where it's at. Revisit old topics. This one is super useful and super helpful, especially in something like mathematics. When you're trying to learn a subject, it certainly doesn't hurt to go back and revisit old topics that you might have forgotten. That knowledge that you learn will help you learn new math. The more math you know, the easier it is to learn new mathematics. Now, what you don't want to do is you don't want to fall into the trap of going back and learning easy stuff and not pushing forward and focusing on what you're really trying to learn. This is one that people fall into all the time. It's a terrible trap. As a concrete example, let's say you're taking a calculus class. In a calculus class, algebra is probably the most difficult thing for people. So what a lot of people will do is they'll take a calculus class. Their teacher will tell them, hey, your algebra skills are no good. You need to work on your algebra. Then they'll go home and they'll spend days working on algebra and they'll neglect the actual calculus. The test will come up and they won't do so well. So you have to find a balance. When you do go back and revisit those old topics, you want to make sure that you keep your eyes on the prize, right? You want to make sure that you focus on what you're trying to learn. If you're trying to learn calculus, you should focus on calculus. If you're trying to learn Python, you should focus on Python. If you're trying to learn Spanish, you should focus on Spanish. 
it's much easier to go back and revisit things we already know. And it's a good strategy, but don't use it as a crutch for not learning what you should be learning. So those are some strategies that you can use to help unlock your true potential. Remember, believe in yourself. We all have potential and it's yet to be untapped. Do you have any advice for people watching this video? If you do, please consider leaving a comment below. People from all over the world watch these videos and they read the comments and they're struggling. They're trying to learn just like you. When you leave a positive comment, it helps those people. And so you're helping people in the world and that's a good thing. If you're not a subscriber, consider hitting the subscribe button today. I hope this video has been helpful to you and I hope you can learn because you can believe in yourself. Good luck.